NASA just revealed what could have caused a peculiar leopard spot pattern on this rock on Mars, and there's a chance the answer points to evidence of ancient life living and excreting on the red planet. The sample comes from a rock called Shayava Falls, located in the ancient river valley Neretva Valles, which was formed by rushing water headed to Jezero Crater many, many years ago. And just for clarification, while we'll be referring to this formation as leopard spots, that only comes from their visual resemblance to the animal. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, there are no leopards living on Mars. Now, if this is ringing any bells, NASA's Perseverance rover actually discovered this rock in June of last year. We covered this on the main channel at the time, but simply looking at the image of this strange pattern doesn't reveal the full picture. NASA teams threw everything they could at the sample they extracted from this rock, utilizing Perseverance's toolkit to the maximum extent. The leopard spots visually show lighter spots surrounded by a thin border of darker material. This is a distinct pattern of minerals arranged into what are known as reaction fronts, points of contact where chemical and physical reactions occur. What remains of these reactions are the signatures of two different minerals which are iron rich in nature. One, called vivianite, is a hydrated iron phosphate, while the other, called grigite, is an iron sulphide. Amongst the leopard spots, there are also some much smaller dots of dark material which were nicknamed poppy seeds by the scientists. This all led to the big question. Is it possible some organic matter could have played a role in creating this? The formation is super interesting because on Earth, vivianite is often found within sediments, peat bogs and decaying organic matter, while grigite can be produced by microbial life. Both of these minerals found in the same place in this formation is a potential indicator that microbial life once lived here, powering itself through the reactions mentioned earlier. There is the possibility, however, that the source of the leopard pattern was not caused by a biological process. For instance, high temperatures which are sustained, acidic conditions and binding by organic compounds can cause these minerals to be generated with no life in sight. But even with that disclaimer, the scientists who studied this rock sample are skeptical of such a process occurring due to the lack of evidence of said high temperatures and acidic conditions, and we don't yet know whether the organic compounds which would have been present at the time would have had the capability of catalyzing such a reaction at low temperatures. Scientifically though, it cannot be ruled out. Taking all of that into account, it's leaning more towards the possibility of life, at least with the current data and scientific analysis. If it is indeed a sign of life, it's also a sign that perhaps the red planet was inhabited much more recently than previously assumed, as the sedimentary rocks involved are some of the youngest ever investigated by Perseverance. Earlier hypotheses assumed that the signatures of ancient life would have only been discoverable in much older rocks, but this latest finding is pointing towards the possibility of life existing on Mars for a longer period or more recently. And if you were curious as to the actual process represented by the leopard spots, then NASA's Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate, Dr. Nikki Fox, had an interesting theory. And this is the kind of signature that we would see um, that was made by something biological. In this case, it's kind of the equivalent of seeing like leftover fossils, you know, leftovers from a meal. And um, maybe that meal's been excreted by a microbe. And that's what we're seeing in this sample. It will not surprise you though to learn that such an extraordinary claim requires extraordinary evidence, which is why this peer-reviewed publication will now become available to the wider science community for more analysis, and tools like the Confidence of Life Detection Scale, or COLD Scale, will essentially rank how confident we are in being able to determine an answer to the question which humans have pondered for centuries when they've cast their eyes to the night sky. Are we alone? Scientists would love to be able to analyze these samples with the abundance of machinery available here on Earth. As said earlier, they've used pretty much the entire toolkit Perseverance has available. Wouldn't it be great if there was, say, a sample return mission to bring bits of these rocks to Earth? NASA's current acting administrator, Sean Duffy, led the press conference and was asked by multiple journalists about the Mars sample return mission and whether China's upcoming Tianwen-3 sample return mission will have implications as well. For context, back in May, the President's fiscal year 2026 request sought to cancel Mars sample return. The planned architecture would be over budget and over time, to the extent that the mission would cost 11 billion for a sample return in 2040. So under Bill Nelson, NASA started looking for commercial options, one of which was Rocket Lab, who even cheekily quote tweeted today's announcement, reminding us of their architecture. Long story short, there wasn't really any new information, with Duffy making very broad statements about general costs and timelines. 
You know, listen, I, I, uh, I, we're running our plan. We're making the right calls uh, for America and for our partners. And again, uh, we lead and we are going to continue to lead. I want to make sure we're making the right decisions, right? And I have to look at dollars and I have to look at time and I have to look at return. And as we do that, we thought, well, there could be a better way to do this to get these samples back. Hopefully it won't be too long until there's even more analysis done on this discovery, because if it does indeed turn out to be evidence of life, Martian exploration would get a lot more exciting than it already is. I've been Ryan Caton for NSF. Thanks for watching and goodbye.